Hey Leon, this is Mike here, and in today's video I get to talk to you about how to get into the University of Cambridge for the MPhil Machine Learning and Machine Intelligence course. Now it's an MPhil in opposed to an MST like you've heard me talk about in a lot of the other videos for Masters courses. That makes this not necessarily a taught postgraduate course, but a research-based postgraduate course. So the emphases on actually how to get into this course are different to other master's courses that we talked about in the past. And it's certainly not easy. In fact, if we look at our last cycle of applicants that have gone for this course, only roughly 40 out of 600 people got accepted onto this course. That's less than 7%. And most of these people would not necessarily have had the help of a tutor like myself um, in order to be able to help them with that application process. So if there's anything interesting that you hear in this video about how to get onto this course, make sure you follow the information on screen right now um, in order to get further information. And now without further ado, I'd like to mention my top five tips on how to get onto this MPhil course. Now, tip number one is a tip that I hope comes across as obvious to many of you. Make sure that you know and you can explain the difference between machine learning and machine intelligence. In today's world and lots of different industries, both of those terms are buzzwords, meaning, or buzz, or buzz phrases rather, meaning that they are terms that are overly used that get people really, really excited, but they don't know really how to explain them. It's not my job to be able to explain to you the differences between the two, but if you don't know yourself, please make sure you have a look yourself, either with additional reading or online. They often encompass many different numerical and computational techniques, as well as different communities of people. And especially if you're in a position going for an MPhil and you're trying to write about your intended area of research, you don't necessarily want to be inaccurate and mistaking one for the other. So before anything, do check those definitions. Moving on to tip number two, make sure that your research proposal is strong. And that's perhaps easier said than done, but at the very least, if you're in the planning stages, there are a few things content-wise you might want to think about before you even start writing. A very, very initial step that you want to take is actually work out why do you want to be able to research at Cambridge specifically, and that goes back to their resources, and actually the power of the research groups you're hoping to join. This is me talking a bit more generally, but actually with this particular MPhil, you want to talk about the machine learning research group in particular, as well as the facilities within the computer laboratories that they have on offer. In terms of what you want to do, you want to back up your research interests with a lot of wider reading. Books are usually a lot better to read for courses like these than reading articles, but if you're reading articles, it's usually better to sort of include in terms of industrial practice of an idea. But what you ideally want to be able to do with a research proposal is work out where is a gap in research at the moment globally that hasn't necessarily been breached that much? Or what is a new area of research that you want to be getting yourself onto? And the only way to be able to do that is by reading research papers. These are by far the best things to be able to do in terms of expanding on your general knowledge of expertise. And by doing this, not only will you be really, really confident sounding in what you're writing about, but you'll also sound original in what you are proposing because you know what has already been done and you know what other groups are already doing. So in order to create a good proposal, make sure that you vary your reading across different books, articles, and papers, but do bear in mind the context of how you are reading all of them and how they can be used to create an effective research proposal. Moving on to tip number three, and if I could, I probably would put it onto every top t uh, list of tips for Cambridge, is make sure that you are trying to be the top in your year. Um, assuming that you are doing a computer science course, you do want to make sure that you are already on a degree doing something like this. You want to be attending all of your classes. You want to be getting 
try or trying to get the highest grades from each of your modules, but the minimum requirement that you should reach in order to get onto this MPhil is that you have to attain a first in your undergraduate degree. By going to every class as well and every lab session and also seeing your professors very, very regularly is also going to help you with references as well and they're going to be able to back up, ideally, the percentage in your year group of where you come from. Cambridge are really, really competitive across the board. They really like hearing performance metrics of how well you've done on any particular courses. They're the same with extracurriculars too, but actually with a research proposal, they don't matter as much as maybe applications for undergraduate degrees or taught postgraduate masters. So as a fundamental baseline, you want to make sure that not only are you getting a first in your degree, but if you want to truly be the most competitive out of the entirety of your application cohort, you want to make sure you're one of the top in your year group. Now, my fourth tip on how to get onto this research masters is by already engaging in research yourself. And there are many ways that you can actually do this. There is the compulsory dissertation on many courses that you have to do or the compulsory project you have to do at the end of the year. You will, without a shadow of a doubt, have to talk about how much you enjoyed this and what you looked at. All universities for research degrees will be asking you in some context, whether that is at an interview stage or whether that is in your written documentation, what did you like about your dissertation or your project? And you will have to readily say what you liked about it, what skills you developed. Um, and if possible, if you had to generate maybe any papers, what papers did you publish? Now, it's not the only way that you can engage in research in the middle of your undergraduate degree. You might also have the opportunity, opportunity even, to be able to do summer projects at your university in research. And different universities do advertise different projects. If you make sure that it's surrounding machine learning or machine intelligence, even better. You want to be able to have research experience that directly correlates to the degree that you're going for. I actually worked with a student really, really recently who needed to build on their research, research experience going into one of these degrees. And actually, in his case, it was very, very interesting because he came from a socioeconomic background where he did not have a lot of money and hence he couldn't necessarily travel far to other universities as a result or dedicate a lot of time uh, in order to do research program in the summer. There are schemes out there if you're in this position that will still allow you to engage not only in research but in workshops and in one-to-one -one supervisions as well. And the program that I got my student to work on was called the INTO program. There are many other programs like this but let's just say accessibility to research has never ever been so open and, and easy for people but you have to look for the opportunities. So make sure that you are always looking out for research opportunities so that when you come to writing your research proposal or personal statement, you've got the content to be able to back up your passion for research. Moving on to my final tip in this video, and this is an absolute must, make sure you get some really, really strong references from your professors, your personal tutors, and your dissertation supervisors. Ideally, your references should be academic, as per most of the courses uh, for Cambridge. And, but if you have actually gone on an internship surrounding machine learning or machine intelligence, it doesn't hurt to have that too as a possibility. Regardless of what you have, they need to have an emphasis on your technical and computational skills. So for instance, it could be that you were working on a particular project, maybe with a professor, where you were collaborating with other people in GitHub, and you were working on a Java project uh, together, maybe surrounding computer vision. Um, the more details of that, perhaps, the better, but what they can easily demonstrate then is actually what your role in that project was. So that's usually why it's better, perhaps, to go for an academic reference than a professional one, um, simply because of the fact that the academic referees may have been 
directly responsible or directly supervising those projects, you might want to talk about in your personal statement. So they add a little bit more credibility to what you've done as well. They also add a lot to your character. If you're showing up to every single class, if you're going to loads and loads of meetings, if you're in regular contact with your professors, they will really, really highly value that. They will probably say you're a very strong, dedicated, passionate candidate who is not afraid of delving into the world of academic research. And the NPHIL uh, for machine learning and machine intelligence is certainly an exciting stepping stone. So make sure that your references, which the university are going to be looking at first and foremost, don't let you down.